All right, so this match review comes to us from Hex Scoops, uh, who, <laughs> this is going to be a while. You need to sit down for this one. This person says they've been playing since 2019. So they say that their hours are, I, I'm not even joking you, they put here 20k. They said they, they have 20k hours. Um, well, what, what I, you know, I, I say <laughs> is the, uh, is the, um, the, the, the place at which people should know their macro and micro play is, um, 1k. So you were claiming that you have 20 times that. Um, the highest player I've ever even heard of in terms of hours was like 14k. So like 20k? I don't know. That's kind of out there. Did they leave the game open? Yeah, that is kind of unreal. That's kind of unreal. That is... Maybe this should be match review you. I mean, in all honesty, probably. Like, holy moly. Romant 2k? Yeah, maybe they missed and put a zero there. I'm thinking. I like how Liz is doing homework over here. I see Liz looking up the hours of a long time, like <laughs> OG DVD streamers over here. <laughs> doing the research. That is 2.2 years. Yeah, they've just been playing DVD for 2.2 years. <laughs> Straight. That's gotta be a... He would only use 20% of his power. <laughs> That's, yeah. I'm thinking maybe they just missed a zero. That is funny though. Um, <laughs> anyways. Uh, you are playing the Zizomorph, which is uh, my wheelhouse, this character I'm best at. Uh, number four worldwide, number one NA, wrote the guide, all that wonderful stuff. Um, you're on Suffle Pit, which Suffle Pit 2 is pretty good for Zizomorph, but Suffle Pit 1 can be pretty challenging with the, the chainable tiles. It does look like, based on where you spawn, this looks like a Suffle Pit 2, because Suffle Pit 2 has the two tiles tied to each other over here on the left side of the map, and I think that's where you are, so I'm thinking it's Suffle Pit 2. Um, yeah, let's take a look at energy perks. perks. You're using Lambert Star Map and Serial Rations. Uh, so typically, the, the recipe to success with the Z-Morph is three add-ons. Doesn't matter which combo of these you run. Lambert Star Map, Emergency Helmet, or Self-Destruct Bolt. You can do double turret. You can do one of the turret add-ons and the Self-Destruct Bolt, but it doesn't really matter. Any of those work. Um, Serial Rations is a good add-on to, like, learn turret placement in general if you're, like, newer to the character, but it is kind of a noob trap because some people just kind of, like, only rely on seal rations to tell them what turrets are and use seal rations to uh, supplant your learning of how to use the tunnels base kit information and just to hunt down the, the turrets that you see when you are in when you are in the tunnels you have 60 meters of footstep reading and also sound reading of the of the the world above you so uh an easy way to just circumvent learning that and be crutched on an add-on forever is to run zero rations and never take it off. So be careful about that. Keep in mind that this add-on can be nice, uh, but if you're going to get better at the character, you this is uh, a noob trap, so be careful about it. Um, your build is kind of all over the place. Um, superior Anatomy is a good idea if you're running Self-Destruct Bolt, but by itself, eh. Brutal, I can kind of see because uh, a lot of the ways people will circumvent Zoomorph is by pre dropping outside the 4.8 meters. So I can get down with that. Moderate Abuse is kind of a not a useless perk, but a very, very underwhelming perk on the Zoomorph because the flame turrets come with a motion sensor that detects you for 41 meters, effectively acting as a giant, bigger than Wesker alternate terrace that you can never turn off in any way, shape, or form. Um, so it kind of just rats you out, even if you're running stealth perks. Um, so just keep in mind that that is not great. Barbecue is an okay perk choice, but also at the same time, like I was mentioning earlier, Xeno has a oodles of base kit tracking information in their kit. So aura reading is kind of, eh, it's okay, but it's like, you know, you kind of already have tracking these kits. So you're like kind of like one step below doctor in terms of just being able to find people naturally. So yeah, uh, let's take a look at the game. Your game is pixely. Oof. Did you hear somebody there? And you just went by him? Yeah, that gen above you was being worked on. I can hear it when you go by it. <laughs> um, so... Keep in mind that in addition to your footfalls and footstep reading that you get in the tunnels, you also get the sounds of anything that is in that range as well. Um, so a gen was being worked on above you and you just kind of like 
rolled on by it, so... Um, you kind of just rolled on by it for, like, no reason, so... Keep your ears out. Looks like you're having connection issues, too. It's not a recipe for success. Although, in all eyes, you kind of can't help that. Dun -dun 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 -dun. I would say keep in mind in general, while you did shut some shut them down really early, because you are the Xenomorph, thankfully, taking your chases at, like, main building or shack is kind of like... Um, I don't know. It, it, it's a risky business to make, so just be careful about that. something going on, on the side there i like how you've been going from control station to control station here <laughs> only using 10 percent of the power yeah good job m wanting them with the turret over m2 ing if you didn't know there's been a long-standing bug with uh the tail attack that it goes through people who have turrets for some reason i don't know why that was a good attempt you don't have to aim that high to get it but that's a good attempt good. Yeah, um, there's just been a long standing bug with, uh, the tail going through people placing turrets, so it's generally better to use your M1 in that circumstance. They said they fixed it once. They did not. <laughs> they, in fact, did not. They say they fixed a lot of things? True. I'm actually gonna... I haven't, I haven't been able to find time to work on it, but I'm gonna, like, reformat... Oh, that sucks. That would've happened to me. Um, I would've been trying to re make time to reformat the uh, bug section of the Xenomorph Guide because bugs just come back so frequently that there's no point to separate it into fixed bugs. Uh, format it into, like, fixed bugs and known bugs. But I'm just gonna make it all one big bug section because the fixed bugs come back so frequently that it's, like... What's the point of having them separate? I think, like, one thing I'm noticing is, like, you're kind of good at, like, hitting over pallets. Uh, like, you know to hit over pallets, but, like, if you keep in mind, you are hitting over the pallets. Um, so you should ideally be putting the, the, the tail over the pallet and not just, like, level with the pallet like you've been doing. Because currently you've been tail attacking just kind of like level with the pallet, which means if they crouch on like the long side, you're just bonking the left side of the pallet. You should be going over. This is kind of like a very, very small arc shot, not just like a normal strafe. So try to introduce some verticality into your pallet shots. Fishing tech, yeah. Like what people called it early. I like the choice to leave a chase you've invested a little too much time in. Realistically, I think you probably should have stayed on Leon there earlier, and you've been kind of just, like, scrambling to, like, find people since. Like, you've been, like, starting chases all over the place. Keep in mind, uh, pressuring, like, two survivors is way easier. Don't ever aim down like that with the tail attack. You should always be aiming center mass or higher in the, uh when you're uh, trying to aim the tail attack, because, um, Unlike Nemesis, the tail attack's collision, uh, d like, does catch it and stop the whole hitbox, unlike with Nemesis. Nemesis, if, like, you catch collision, your hitboxes keep going. Um, so, obviously, if you've uh, ever noticed in Dead by Daylight, collision's kind of funky. So if you aim low on the Xenomorph with the tail attack, nine times out of ten, you're just going to whack the floor and not the survivors. So don't aim at their legs. Uh, aim at, like, the center mass from, like, their waist up to their, like, shoulder head area. Um, because that's going to make sure you don't hit the ground there. Which is kind of funny because most characters in DBD, uh, Pinhead's are an example. Like, it's actually better to aim at the feet, but, like, Zemorph's the exception. You aim center mass specifically. Hey, Denali, welcome back. Good job waiting up the uh, dead hard. Good shot there. You're missing your lunge range like you're you're kind of like overestimating your lunge range a lot which is interesting because usually that's a like a console thing but like you're on pc i think it's interesting like one time one or two times happens to the best of us but that's like that was like the fourth time you missed a lunge which is kind of interesting 
that time adds up over time, match time, chin time. But you're constantly extending your chases by just going for these, like mess missing these lunges. Yeah, they're on PC. Like uh, I would have assumed console. Honestly, your best. Yeah, you should just go for Nia here, honestly. So, like, typically in Dead by Daylight, you need somebody dead by two gens. If that's not the case, you need to make it happen as much as possible. Uh, so you may be wondering, Bran, why are you recommending the tunnel here at three gens? Because in their macro sense, you're kind of at two gens. Because this gen has, like, what, like a third progress? And somewhere uncontested, you know Leon is somewhere out here working on a gen somewhere, assumedly. Like, you don't know that for sure. But you haven't seen Leon in a long time. So, you know, the odds are he's on a gen over here out in the in the in the deep wilderness of the map somewhere, right? But realistically, even though that number says three, you have a gen in front of you that's at a third and a gen about out here that could be popping any moment. So realistically, you should play like you're at two gens, because if you look at the gen progress, you're pretty close to two gens. I think that's one of the biggest things I see people don't do in DBD in terms of a macro play thing that I think um, yeah, that people could improve on. It's like, yeah, what did I say, by the way? What did I just say? We just done having, we just got done having that conversation of like, hey, a gen could be popping any moment. Not even like what, like 13 seconds later? Gen pop. What did I say? I know my stuff, don't I? <laughs> like people, people see this number down here, this two as like rigidly two, right? They're like, okay, we're at two gens, so we are at it, two gens, zero gen progress on the map, which is not true. That's never true, right? Unless you've like, you know, slugged everybody out and nobody's touching a gen right now, right? Um, like, realistically, you should be thinking of that number down there in like five, 4.9, 4.8, 4.7. You should be keeping track in your head of like the gen progress that you see or can assume is happening and equating that number down there. You shouldn't be just go, okay, it's two, so it's two, right? Because realistically, you know, one gen we know about for sure has like a third of progress, right? So we're not at two gens. We're at 1.6.66.666, you know, like, we're at, we're at, a, we're at a gen, a gen in, in two thirds, realistically, right? So you should play as if you're at a gen in two thirds, not two. But people don't do that. They just see two and they go, okay, well, it's at two. But that's not really, that's not realistic, right? That's not what's actually happening. So, that helps a lot. Am I your favorite alien main? No. You're my, my favorite spirit main. Favorite Fung main. Yeah, I actually like the Trinsen Mask. Yeah, you gotta not aim low with your tail attacks. Guess I'll take that? Why? What's, what? What's wrong? What? You don't. You barely even play alien. You should be going for like Nia here. You're going for really an ambitious shots, which I appreciate, and it'll help you learn the character. But at a certain point, you need to start playing safer once you're under a crunch. You don't know that. Zeal Nato, come on. Can you imagine how cool a Zeal Morph anniversary mask would be? That'd be sick. I would love a Zeal Morph anniversary, anniversary outfit. That'd be awesome. It's just quick, yeah, I was just be warming up. Why would you check the locker there? This is one of those weird things. This is just like a side tangent. This is why I much, much prefer Emergency Helmet over Lambert Star Map. Because like it's just like that where you're like more at the range, uh, like the like the the max range of that eight meters. Um, like you weren't able to get up there and, and want it in time. Um, but like with Emergency Helmet, you would have, which is why I prefer it. It's like you may get fired upon earlier with Emergency Helmet, but you have more time to deal with it. Good mind in there. 
If you had done what you're doing now, which is focusing on Leon and then going back to Nia, like you would have been fine. You this game wouldn't even been close. You kind of like started side questing to go after all four survivors, but you don't really have any perks or anything that really synergizes with going after all four survivors, so you don't really have to. Leon! Help me, Leon! Leon, help me! You know what feels like a fever dream that happened? Tricks. <laughs> that doesn't feel real. That doesn't feel like that actually happened. They got tracks. Got it? Ha! Huh. Tracks. <laughs> How is she real? Just dumb? Yeah. The Lapis and the uh, Medusa hair people running combo and, like, are obnoxious. Yeah, that was just a shared fever dream. Doesn't feel like that happened. I think a chase it shack. Like, what the heck was that? This late in the game? Not ideal. <laughs> you, you gotta. Achievement. Yeah, you need to figure out whatever issue you're having with lunges. Like, it's actively hurting you, like, severely. That's kind of unfair, don't you think? That was my favorite line of hers. She was essentially dissing the DVD community. It's very cool. Could you go play it? If you want to get better at tail, could you play only? I think you meant to say only like the tail attacks. Don't miss your one unless you're in crawler mode. Uh, we we actually talked about this on the Xeno Summit yesterday. Tail attack only is not as real is not as practical as it should be because collision is so wonky and un, un unrealistic <laughs> to like what you see in the game. Um. Sometimes they'll just be open air and you'll just hit the thin air above something and you'll be like, why? Why did that happen? So like M2 only is not as uh M2 only is not as like practical as you'd think. It's not like Huntress where like you will you will you'll hit collision, bad collision sometimes. There's that person in the basement. Um But like you have like, you know, you have a bunch more hatchets, so you basically just catch right back up and keep going. Like it's so severely detrimental. Is this a newer player? No, they claim they had 20k hours, which is probably a typo. They probably mean 2k, <laughs> but it was funny to entertain that idea. That's why I would think that. That's why I always say like I don't want the the tail attack adjusted, uh, uh like completely changed. I just want a collision pass to it. That way, like the collision makes more sense. Not so much that I want the uh, like the tail attack to function differently. It just needs to be like have the uh, rough edges smoothed out. Yeah, you're, you're gonna end this with the two K. But like I said, if you had just focused Nia and Leon earlier, you would have been at least in a. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. In terms of your main takeaways, your first main takeaway is in order to aim well on the Zemo, if you need to aim center mass, which is like based up. Uh, if you're aiming at the ground, as you found out, most of the time, you're going to be hitting through their legs and hitting the ground instead. Um, so if you want to hit more of your tail attacks, please aim in the chest, belly, shoulders area. Here's your second takeaway. Uh, prowling for survivors is hard. So by and large, Dead by Daylight, you tend to focus two people, sometimes three, instead of trying to corral everyone. I think it's much of the I appreciate that. It's very, very kind of you. Thank you. So you kind of started doing that earlier in the match where you were like... Trying to go after uh, Nia and Leon, but around like two or three gens, you just started like trying to like focus the whole team as if you had Pain Res, Grim Embrace, No Way Out to get value. But you like you don't have any perks like that, so there's really no reason to start going after fresh survivors that are fully healthy with no hooks that deep into the game. There's kind of just like no reason to do that. You should have just kept focusing Leon and uh, Nia until the match is over, and then go for the other. Um, and if you had honestly done that. Instead of making that weird switch, this would have been like a three or four K. Uh, and the final takeaway, uh, having to do also with the tail attack, is remember when you're hitting over a pallet. Keep in mind you are literally hitting over the pallet. You can go for shots where you just like keep it level and hit them on the other side. Um, that is a thing, but it's more difficult because if they crouch on the high side, you may just hit the pallet instead. But if you're actually, you know, giving a little bit of verticality, doing like a little arc shot and going up and over, you'll you'll hit them most times if they're crouching behind it. So. Yeah. 
those would be my main three.